<clears throat> so we will introduce this uh, concept of a tidal bore. It's uh, something that happens when the um, river is flowing into, uh, let's say, an estuary or an uh, ocean where there are tides coming in. So tides come in and the currents are opposing it, so you end up with a kind of a wall of water. Okay, it moves up uh, rivers and in something like the Amazon River it can be found uh, several hundred kilometers into uh, the river. Those are called tidal bores and we'll see some pictures soon. So the conditions needed for creating tidal bores are essentially that you need a fairly large uh, spring tidal range so a 6 meter or 20 feet range is uh, pretty good. Uh, you need an abrupt flood tide, which means you get a sudden rush of water into the river and the web tide is short. So you have a lot of water coming in and then ebb tide is uh, also short. So uh, the uh, river is low-lying so that the tide can completely enter the river from the ocean or the estuary and the river has to get shallower as you uh, go towards uh, uh, inland from the seafloor. Shallowing of landward seafloor. So seafloor becomes shallower as it comes in. So the river is low, seafloor is getting shallower and you are bringing a sudden gush of water with the tides, right? And if the river narrows as it goes up into the river then it's better because you are going to have a venturi effect, so you're going to accelerate the water as well, right? So here is a, a cartoon, a schematic, so you have an incoming tide with proper conditions and the river is flowing in and they're going to run into each other and create these tidal bores and here are some uh, examples. This is a little uh, piddly tidal bore uh, at the end of its uh, run into the river and here is a a uh, nice father running with his daughter. He's not worried, of course, because he knows this is not going to get very big. On the other hand, if you go to this uh, river in China, maybe it's the Pokoi Tidal Range. I don't remember, but you can look it up. You can go there at regular spring tides to watch the tidal bore come in and create this kind of a splash. Okay, so you can see the buildings there. The buildings are completely underwater and people in the parking lot here are going to all get wet. So it's a touristic uh, attraction. You can also uh, surf up the tidal bore, obviously, in the sa several rivers like uh, the Seine. People do that. So if you catch the spring tide at the right time at the uh, in river entering the ocean, then you can go uh, way up the river riding the tidal bore, surfing the tidal bore. So you can see the people uh, doing that there. Okay, So obviously uh, the tidal currents are created at the coast as the tides come in and they cannot just go out so they create some patterns where transports of water are involved. So they can create rotary currents where the current uh, comes with a slowly turning tide crest, uh, like in Northern Hemisphere, which will count, uh, rotate counterclockwise, as usually we expect uh, a cyclonic circulation to do in the Northern Hemisphere. And you can get alternating reversing currents moving in and out in narrow coastal passages. Uh, I don't know if there is a figure here, but essentially we already talked about flood current when the water rushes in and the ebb current when the water drains back out of the bay or the estuary or uh, the river. Then you end up with these things uh, called high slack water, low slack water, high slack water and low slack water uh, and so on. Essentially that means the uh, lower high water is reached so the water has sloshed up, it's reached its maximum uh, height it's going to stop for a moment and then it's going to be ebbing. So you have zero current as you reach here and then the ebb current going down. 
then you're going to go to the flood phase so the flood currents are coming in and you are going to reach the high slack water and then an ebb current again and you are going to get lower low slack water so here it is higher uh, low water and a lower low water okay so you have higher high water and lower high water these are just terminologies when you have mixed tidal patterns you're going to get different ranges of uh, tidal heights during the day so obviously we're going to have to name them uh, differently and here you can see the ebb current going out flood current coming in ebb current flood current and so on with those low slack water high slack water and uh, so on okay very simple stuff but good to know so obviously that means you can also have currents and the tides together forming uh, complex circulations uh, there is a famous whirlpool that occurs called the maelstrom off of uh, Norway up here you can see the map here you can see the blow up here in the Arctic Circle and actually the rapidly spinning water actually is so fast is created by this restricted channel configuration uh, connecting the two basins and they have different tidal cycles and the 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 whirlpool gets so strong that uh, ships can actually lose control okay they get turned around so it's not a uh, just a theoretical thing that uh, there is enough tidal energy coming in that it can actually create these kind of circulations and uh, the ships are not small right so they can actually uh, get caught in this and uh, lose the steering uh, for a bit so they have to be prepared for it it's a well-known feature so obviously um, they know how to deal with it but nonetheless the maelstrom is uh, off of Norway in the Arctic Circle